Welcome back to Blue Squadron. In this video, we are planning out the circuit diagram for the electronics that go inside of the Upsilon class shuttle. That eight-legged chip that I'm holding is an ATtiny85 microcontroller. It's the same integrated circuit that is the brains of the Adafruit Trinket. However, I'm going to be using that SparkFun controller to program it directly. In addition, we're going to be soldering the LEDs directly to the legs on the chip. With this model, I get to do something that I never get to do, which is trace out the model and figure out exactly where all of the LEDs and wires are supposed to go. Physically planning the space inside of the model is usually the most challenging part, so this is pretty nice. The AT1085 is going to sit on the post where the peg goes in, and the first thing you're going to do is copy the pinout diagram from the SparkFun uh, AVR programmer. The dot in the upper left-hand corner of the chip shows the orientation of the chip. This is important because I have to copy onto my diagram the pin numbers as well as the positive and negative pins for each of those legs. Now, if you're super eagle-eyed, then you'll notice that I've already made a mistake in this diagram, and we'll come back to that later. The first thing that I'm going to lay out inside of the circuit diagram are these 3mm red LEDs. It's important to know where I want the orientation of the cathode and anode legs, in other words, the long and short legs, as well as which pins I want those legs to connect to. In total, there are going to be three LEDs in the cockpit and then two that are going to go into the back for the engines. Since the cockpit LEDs are the ones that make that flashing Knight Rider or Cylon pattern, they'll have to be connected to legs that have analog write capabilities. Of the five pins, zero through four, only three of them are capable of analog write. The engines will just have to be connected to some always-on, regular digital write pins. Now to plan out the circuit. The first thing I want are those two engine LEDs to be connected in serial and then have a resistor attached to them. The direction of that triangular LED symbol indicates which direction the LED's pins are facing. I'm also adding a resistor into the circuit to keep the LEDs from popping. The power source is going to be 5 volts. Each of the standard red LEDs has a forward voltage of about 2 volts. The remaining voltage has to be converted to heat using that 51 ohm resistor. This prevents the LEDs from burning out, and you can figure out that 51 ohm value by using an online calculator. Finally, the LEDs will terminate at the ground pin, marked by the negative symbol. I know I'm going to need to get a female JST connector into the fuselage so that I can provide power to the chip, so I'm tracing that in now. Next, I have to draw in each of the cockpit LEDs. Since each LED is controlled independently using a different pin, they'll each have to have their own 150 ohm resistor. All the legs can be tied together into what's called the common ground, basically connecting the negative pin of the at 85 to the negative battery terminal. Of course, jumping into the future and building the circuit and then finding out it didn't work, I had to go back and look at my diagram and figured out that I had actually switched pins 3 and 4 on my wiring diagram. In addition, the Arduino environment is only capable of programming certain pins on the at 85 for analog write capability. In fact, you'll notice through the magic of time travel slash video editing that I have a test circuit built into a breadboard. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. But this is how I figured out what the actual wiring diagram is supposed to be once I corrected the pin order. If all of the lines are beginning to look like a rat's nest to you, then you're absolutely correct. In fact, the lines are usually what's called a rat's nest in the circuit diagrams, and they have to be untangled. In real life, if anything's touching that shouldn't be, in other words, two lines are crossing where they shouldn't, then we'll create a condition called a short circuit. In other words, uh, electricity will flow to the ground instead of lighting the components. On a commercial PCB, they solve this problem by having multi-layered circuit boards. We're going to have to solve this problem inside of the model by using a fair amount of insulation. In the end, it turns out that I needed to use pins 0, 1, and 4 to control the cockpit LEDs, since those are capable of analog write inside of the Arduino programming environment, and then use pin 3 as a digital write pin to control the engines, which are going to be always on. In the next video, I'm going to show you the code for the Upsilon shuttle, as well as how to program the ATtiny85 controller using that SparkFun AVR programmer. Thanks for watching.